Hello and welcome to The Gaggle, where we challenge and, if necessary, destroy media narratives. I'm George Sandy Wiley. With me today, of course, is uh, co-founder of The Gaggle, Peter Lavelle, host also of RT's talk show, Crosto. Uh, Peter, in, in, in the spirit of this momentous uh, seven days um, that we're about to uh, uh, endure, um, a, a very interesting uh, event occurred. Um, our friend, uh, Vladimir Zelensky, who, about whom we haven't spoken for a few days, uh, gave a long interview to Axios. And during this interview, he expressed deep, deep bitterness and resentment uh, toward the um, Biden administration. I mean, I, I'll read a few set parts of it just to get a sense of how uh, angry he is. So he was asked about, um, uh, how do you feel about um, uh, the Biden administration waiving sanctions on the uh, North, North Stream 2 operator? Well, to be honest, uh, we were very surprised. Um, you know, we, you know we, we thought that you know, the United States has our back, uh, that America is our strategic partner. Um, but as far as we can see, Nord Stream 2 is a weapon, a real weapon. And I speak openly about it, a weapon in the hands of the Russian Federation. Uh, and so it's not very understandable. I feel and definitely not expected that the bullets to this weapon can possibly pro be provided by such a great country as the United States. Um, you know, we thought that the United States was defending the exact same principles in Europe as we in Ukraine were. Um, um, He's a comedian, and, isn't he? He's a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is why I feel this decision. And it's not just me feeling it. Uh, this, you know, it's terrible. Unfortunately, it is definitely not aimed at supporting uh, Ukraine. Um, and then uh, he's, he starts talking about, um, uh, you, know, uh, you know, he's still complaining bitterly. And then he's asked, well, uh, do you really believe that Biden can stop this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm positive he could stop it. I believe that even if there was only 1% left, it would still be possible to stop such a serious leverage that Russia will have in the future to influence energy security. Um, and, uh, and, and then says, um, blah, blah. even if we sometimes hear messages like it's done, uh, that, you know, that this is a big opportunity to defend democracy, uh, you know, and the United States hasn't done so. Um, and then he talks um, uh, about um, uh, NATO and um, he talks about, um, yeah, well, he, he, the, the, it was a bizarre moment where he's comparing Biden toward Michael Jordan. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> well, you know, what, what about this, um, you know, this membership of uh, NATO that you, 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 that you were promised? Um, well, you know, he says, you know, I, I, this, this, some bad things will, are happening. You know, well, I personally believe Ukraine will eventually join NATO. Um, however, I have to point out that many Ukrainians increasingly don't believe this as strongly as they used to. I consider this to be a big problem. Um, secondly, I think that even if we are welcome in NATO, if they really want to see us as a, as a member, then it's no use looking into the binoculars into some distant future and discussing the future. The issue should be resolved immediately. We are in danger right now. Our independence is at stake right now. And we need help. Um, so, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we can't uh, wait. Um, this is a bit, one bizarre interview. And you really get a sense that um, uh, the Biden administration had, had egged him on, had given him all sorts of assurances. Had a boy, had a boy. And then they suddenly realized, hey, what the hell are we doing? And have backed away. And naturally, uh, Zelensky, um, is unhappy. Not, not for the first time. I mean, there, was, there have been many people like that who were given all sorts of assurances by the United States and then they were left at the altar. Uh, do you remember the, um, the Cuban exiles who thought the Americans would have their back when, when they Ooh. made Cuba? Ouch. <laughs> <Yeah>. Ouch. <laughs> anyway, what was your take, Peter? I, I suppose some of those Cubans are still in prison. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah um, Zelensky needs to kind of taper off the Vinman Kool-Aid, okay? Because, right. yeah, you know, because he, he's just taking it too seriously. You know, it's a, it's a cocktail. You shouldn't drink it straight, okay? <laughs> um, surprise! <laughs> As Saakashvili, <Right. laughs> how reliable! <laughs> those, those fighting words, you know? Oh, you got your back, okay? Yes, yes. yes. 
Zelensky, these people don't care about you or your country at all, right. at all. As a matter of fact, you know, to add insult to injury, I suppose, from, from Zelensky's position is that they wanted to stop Ru Russian gas going to Germany um, be and, and because the Germans wanted the pipeline, not the Russians, is that um, if they were able to succeed in blocking that, they were going to sell the Europeans uh, liquefied natural gas, right. not through, not Russia. Exactly. Not through that, that, that wasn't going to happen. Not through your country. No what? transit fee for you. So right. Zelensky, no, no matter how you cut it, pipeline or no pipeline, no transit right. fee for you. Right. George, never mentioned in the mainstream media right. whatsoever. No. And plus, you know, with this um, um, uh, big tour for, for Big Joe there, it's going to be exhausting for him. Um, they're going to talk about Russia, 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 China, 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 not Ukraine, right. not you. Right. Okay. Right, right. And, and, and plus the, the French and the Germans and, uh, uh, and being the most important players in the European Union are just dead set against having Ukraine into the alliance. Okay. Why? So we all can go to war, okay? Because why should Zelensky determine the fate of, of humanity? Right. When, when you look at the loose rhetoric of, the, of the, the Ukrainian president over the last few months, I mean, this guy needs to calm down and maybe be restrained with a little white coat every once in a while, because it's really, really reckless talk. It, it really is reckless talk because um, yeah, this is the United States. This is your big patron. Um, it's the United States that's your patron, not Germany or France. I mean, they, they think you're a real, you know, bloody public nuisance. You're a menace uh, in the heart of Europe, um, you know, like trying to provoke a, a very dangerous conflict. United States, that's your, uh, that's your main uh, friend and ally and supporter. When you talk in this way about the Americans, they don't really like it. Uh, so, you know, he, you know, know your place. Yeah, know he, your he, place. He's like saying they sold us out. You know, yeah. they gave they gave well, us. They, all, did. <laughs> they did. They gave us all sorts of promises, and they didn't deliver. Now, you know, now it's, as you said, to be fair, he is a comedian, and uh, you know, he's not politically experienced. But you would have thought he would have looked at history. I mean, we we talk about obviously the, the Cuban exiles, um, but the others. You know. The Hungarians remember in '56. You know, you know, the you know, the the, uh, the Marines didn't arrive to uh, fight on behalf of the uh, Hungarian fighters. Um, you know, so you know, Czechoslovakia also. You know, no one arrived to fight for them. And uh, Kiev uh, built the wall. Right. Yeah. So so he should he should have known that it wasn't going to happen. Um, and now this whole thing. Oh well, we we've been promised all these things about uh, NATO. Well. You, that's what's holding up your membership of NATO. <laughs> it's precisely that no one wants to go fight Russia <laughs> in Ukraine. Um, and, and basically, you know, the, the, Ukraine wants good relations with Russia. It has to pursue good relations with Russia. But it's not going to, the idea of, well, if we have America in our back, we're going to be, be able to coerce Russia. We're going to be able to extract concessions from Russia. It's not going to happen. I mean, Russia's made clear, <clears throat> you know, if you want something, you know, then you come to us and you and we're ready to an improvement in bilateral relations. But if you start threatening, uh, trying to go uh, do use force, you're not going to have a responsive partner. To well, in the in the article that you sent me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I read it quickly. There was no mention of the Minsk Accords. No, no, no. See, see again. See, this is the kind of disinformation that's being sent out. Everyone, listen up. There are something called Minsk One, and I was updated to Minsk Two. It is a internal Ukrainian plan to resolve the conflict with uh, Donetsk and Lugansk to keep those two parts of uh, of Ukraine in Ukraine and to be able to have a certified border. This is all to Ukraine's advantage, uh, um, uh, all things being equal. It's because the political class and the oligarchs have invested in um, um, uh, being able to uh, use the West to enact a, a, a defeat on Russia, and they get to keep all the marbles on the playground. It's illusory. There is a way out of this to cool tensions down. Russia is a observer to this um, uh, agreement. It's all out there. It's actually, I, you can put it on one page. It's really, really short, okay? It's not complicated. 
It's not complicated. Right. And the, the um, authorities in Kiev signed it, but they won't implement it, no. okay? But we never hear about this. Right. You know, the New York Times article you and I discussed earlier, you know, with, with Ukraine. Well, well, why is Ukraine in the, Ukraine <laughs> the way it is now? Right. No background. Right, right. No, no, exactly right. It is kind of amusing how um, Zelensky uh, is going to, because even in this interview, this Axios uh, reporters, they were kind of egging him on, you know, you know, hey, well, you've been promised NATO membership. It's simply a long time coming. You know, what, what do you think of that? And hey, Nord Stream 2, didn't Biden promise you that he was going to do something about it? You must be really pissed off, no? I mean, yeah, I bet they were kind of snickering. You think they were snickering when they were asking those questions? <laughs> Could well be, but I suspect that they are. Uh, they, they got you. <laughs> they tricked you. <laughs> but I suspect that they, you know, these kinds of people, they were, they were all drunk and, uh, you know, into whole, the whole NATO thing. And, uh, and somehow, you know, what's, what's bad for Putin is great for the world. And so I think that, they, you know, they think that somehow they, these poor little countries are being sacrificed to the big bad bear. I mean, that, I, mean I think that they probably have to, that, that's their, their sort of mentality. You yes. know, with Hungary, Czechoslovakia, Poland, and now Ukraine, we're continually sacrificing little countries. But by the US approach to Ukraine, in, during the, the, the first uh, few months here of the Biden administration with that flare up that we saw a couple months ago, it, it's not a it, it, this is not over because Zelensky uh, lamenting almost like crying as it like a teenager that you know somebody lied to me or didn't you know they get, didn't get deliver that new iPhone what what's the world coming to okay he promised me a new iPhone okay but they're going to be elements within Ukraine that are going to test the, the the U.S. resolve here and right. and 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 again this is all rooted in this. Um, uh, uh, Russophobic drive of the American political class. Again, Ukraine is not in the equation. They don't care. But if, if they could create a con conditions on the ground where it's they, that's what they want. They want to force it. And you, you and I have talked about blank checks in the past, where it only ends in disaster. Right. So Zelensky and his his um, uh, uh, people around him, his circle, might say, "Well, we're going to have to maybe turn up the volume here." Okay, and that is a result of this uh, poorly thought out policy in Washington. Right. No, that's right. And in fact, Zelensky did talk to Biden on the phone the other day, and Biden promised him a meeting in July. Uh, so, you know, if that does take place, uh, you know, again, you know, Zelensky will be uh, doing his usual spiel. What's also amusing is that when Blinken and his team, including Newland, were in um, Kiev recently, uh, and they didn't really have very much to say about um, the fight against Russia, they were talking about rooting out corruption. Now, they have a particular understanding of rooting out corruption. They say, you know, you know, don't give anything to the Ukrainian oligarchs, give everything to our oligarchs. Um, we want basically to everything, we want to just buy up everything for a song and, and make a ton of money. Um, and if you are in favor of fighting corruption, you better allow us to, to do just that. I mean, it's basically good, completely impoverished Ukraine. That was the, that was the message of Blinken and Newland. A good example is Neftegas. That's the pipeline in Ukraine. And um, that's a nice... It's kind of rickety. It needs some work, okay? But it's a cash cow. Right. And Zelensky changed the board with his friends, okay? Right. And his oligarchs, okay? And, and uh, of course, Blinken and Newland, uh, 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 where's our chair? Where's, right. uh, you know, where, where's our seat on that board? Right. See, that's what they want. They want that, okay? Because that is a cash cow. That is good money, okay? Yeah. And, 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 and so they, they, they're not fighting corruption. No, you're right. They're not seeding the, 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 uh, the pockets of American oligarchs that would love to go in and asset. Oh, they have done a lot of asset grabbing already. Yes. Significantly land, land, land. okay? Yeah. Yeah. And that's something Russia does not allow. It does not allow outsiders to buy. You can lease, but you can't buy it. Why? Because there'll be people like uh, uh, Bezos and Gates and others that will come up and buy huge chunks of the country, right. and then it, they lose their sovereignty. That's Ukraine right. is, they talk, talk about you know, protecting their sovereignty. They give it away left, right, and center, don't they? 
That's exactly exactly right, and that's um, that, that and that's what happened in the case of uh, in Russia because when they started that whole privatization thing, uh, yeah, you got all these uh, people, you know, they 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 got these little worthless bits of paper, then they sold them uh, to oligarchs, but the, these oligarchs then sold them to the giant multi multinational corporations. So yeah, you're sure they're going to come in buy little lots of land, but then they sell them. And so, you know, who's, who's going to be holding uh, the land? You know, the giant multinational corporations. And that, that, that's the plan that the United States has for Ukraine. What, what are the origins of the demonization of, of, of uh, Putin? Every, does anyone know? It's called Yukos. Right. It was a company by Khodorkovsky. He cobbled it together under the most dubious circumstances. I want to be careful because I don't want to get sued. Um, and... Khodorkovsky wanted to sell it to Western oil companies. That's and that's when Putin said, no, this is a sovereign issue. Right. This is a, this is the state decides these kinds of things, right. not you. OK, and 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 heartbeat, the Financial Times turned up. Putin was a reformer, young reformer. Right. He's got, compared to Yeltsin. He's vigorous and all of this. OK, and then Yukos came. Boom. It's yeah. never uh, been the no, same. No, no question. That, that's, that's exactly it. That, that's when they turned on him. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's it. So you always, again, when we read the Western media and they talk about reforms, which sound oh, good, reforms, fighting corruption. Oh, that sounds, sounds right. You know, what, what's really going on here? Basically, yeah, you allow in our oligarchs, our multinationals, and they're going to buy out everything for a Hunter summer. was there. Yeah. Hunter. <laughs> that's it. And then, you know, you know, the, the people who actually live there will, will, you know, will be, will serve us as waiters and uh, shoe cleaners and so on and so forth. I mean, that, you know, that, that's what they'll be there. They'll be live this, you know, they're just going to be our servants. That's the plan. Um, Ukraine has been led very foolishly uh, since 20, uh, 2014, has walked right into it. Uh, relying on the United States was an absolute calamity. Uh, <laughs> Um, no, I mean, they look at the absurdity of it all here. Here you have Zelensky giving that interview, uh, you know, drunk on the Vindman Kool-Aid. And who's Ukraine's biggest trading partner, George? Yeah. Oh, it's Russia. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it's the absurdity of it all. Yeah. Exactly. Well, okay. And then, and then, and then the, the, they have the Western ambassadors in Kiev. You can't have the Russian vaccine. No, 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 no. You're going to take another vaccine. Again, giving away your sovereignty left, right, and center. Okay. Right. We had a Nikolai Petro on uh, during the summer, and and he, and he told he um, uh, revealed a, a, a poll that there are more people in Ukraine that think the Western ambassadors are the real nexus of power and not the president of the yes. country himself. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's exactly right. Um, it, but th th it's very amusing. Uh, this whole story about how oh Russia is trying to use the vaccine as part of its diplomacy. Today, there's an item saying that the first countries that the United States will be giving the vaccine to um, uh, Ukraine, Georgia, and I think Kosovo. You know, that's interesting. They're the first three. There's no geopolitics there. No, no geopolitics. There. No, I think that's overreach. Okay. <laughs> Look, over 40 countries in the world are using the Sputnik vaccine. I bet you never heard that on mainstream media, okay? Right. Right. There's plenty of countries that are using it and I'm very happy to. And even individual members of the European Union are, um, uh, uh, looks like they're going to go through with it, okay? There's a lot of political um, um, blockades being put up but they're being overcome. So um, you never hear about that. You, uh, you know, I look at American media very closely. I mean, only once have I heard the Russian vaccine mentioned, it doesn't work. Yes. You saw yeah. what? Right. Right. Yeah. I've never heard that. Only an American congressman can say that. It yeah. doesn't work. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. They're trying to use it. You know, well, I took it. I'm here. They I don't have horns. Yeah. They say they're coercing uh, the world with their vaccine. Yeah. <laughs> we must fight the Russian vaccine. <laughs> People are begging for it, begging. Yeah. And then you have you have these small minded, uh, spineless politicians saying no, because they, they deem it as a political issue, not a medical issue. It's just ridiculous. It's a, the, the, again, the hypocrisy stinks to high heaven. OK, that's, that's the way. But Zelensky, to kind of wrap up here, we told you so. We told yes. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> You, you kind of feel bad for the guy. I mean, he got kind of completely in over his head. Um, 
but he failed spectacularly because he um, he promised to be different. He promised to change. He won an overwhelming victory because he he, you know, he promised to basically abandon the, the Poroshenko policies, which had led Ukraine to disaster. He hasn't done so, and now he's kind of floundering around, giving these ridiculous. Uh, I mean, when you say drunk, I mean he he almost sounded drunk during this uh, this. Well, I mean, look look at his campaign that was quite inspiring, considering everything that didn't happening. Is it where was NATO membership? Or where was that on the list of priorities? Right. It wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. And now that's all it is. Yep. No, he, it's like he, you know, he, he went through speed dating and he thought he got a winning number. But, you know, there were other people there, you know, yours didn't number didn't come up. Sorry. It happens often. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Peter. Um, we're, on, we're on locals. So go to the gaggle.locals.com. There's a tip jar there. We would appreciate if you would uh, take complete advantage of that. Thank yeah, you. Absolutely. And, uh, and you know, we, we want new subscribers, as many new subscribers as possible, all helps us uh, enormously. Uh, we're also on Rumble. Look us up on Rumble. And if you like the gaggle, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon. Bye.